at solving a quadratic inequality. On this, we are going to be graphing the function. Uh, this is going to be a parabola because we got an x squared term, and that's the highest power of x. Now, I like my x squared terms to be positive. So to make this positive, we're going to multiply by negative 1. Now, of course, when we multiply by negative 1, here, this is going to flip our inequality sign. Let's grab a better color. All right. Negative x squared minus x plus 6, less than 0, multiplying by negative 1. So that gives us positive x squared plus x minus 6. Flips the inequality, and of course, 0 times anything will be 0. All right, now we're working with a quadratic inequality. This parabola that I'm about to graph is going to be happy. And this is important. We have to give this parabola a name. So we're not very creative. Usually we call our functions f for function. And x squared plus x minus 6. So when we graph this, the most important part of the graph is going to be the x-intercepts. And what we want to do, <coughs> this above here is f. So I'm going to rewrite this in original inequality as f of x is greater than 0. I just replaced this right here by our f of x function. And we're looking at comparing when are the y values of the function positive. When are the y values positive? So when we look at the graph, we're going to be looking at the portion that's above the x-axis. But our answer is going to describe the x values that correspond to these positive y values. All right, so graphing this, all we need are really the x-intercepts. So we're going to set it equal to 0. Set 0 equal to f of x. So we got 0 equals x squared plus x minus 6. There are three ways to solve for x. You can go quadratic formula. which is x equals, we have a is 1, b is 1, c is negative 6. This came from the coefficients right above, x squared coefficients 1, x coefficients 1, the constant coefficient is negative 6, so you get negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. So this is one way to get the x-intercepts. It's possible you have no x-intercepts, or maybe just one. Uh, the other way is to complete the square. The reason I'm not going to complete the square is because we have to take half of the x-coefficient, which would be, in this case, 1 half, and I don't like fractions very much. So I avoid them whenever I have the possibility to do so. So I'll just write complete square. And the third option is factor and get lucky. Now I created this problem, so this problem factors. So I need to multiply to make negative six and add to make one. So there are two possibilities to multiply to make six. So six equals one times six, or of course six times one. The other option is two times three or three times two. <clears throat> we need a 1x right here, so I need to have 1x. So 1 and 6 are bad because the difference between 1 and 6 is going to be 5 or negative 5, and that's not going to get us the 1 right here. 2 and 3, however, uh, in this situation work out better. So I need a negative 6, so that means 1's minus and 1's plus. That's the only way you multiply and get negative is a positive negative product. It gives you negative and it's only a question of where's the 2 and the 3 go. So I'm going to just take a guess here. So this is what I call guessing and checking. You can uh, just use intuition and figure this out, but I'm just going to go guess and check here. First term, of course, x squared inside minus 3x outside plus 2x. The last is minus 6. Of course, the x squared minus 6 better work because that's where I... Uh, got these numbers from, but you can see that the negative and positive need to be switched around right here. I need plus 3x minus 2x 
to give me positive 1x. So we're going to go ahead, edit those signs. So we got plus minus, and now this does in fact reduce down to the original. All right, so we just checked our work. It, it's good. So we get two x-intercepts, one's here and one is here. This is the zero product property. When two things multiply to make zero, then one or both of those are zero. So this means x equals negative three or x equals positive two. All right, these are our x-intercepts. We're gonna graph them as negative three, zero and two, zero. So there's negative three right there. I'm actually gonna put it below. Positive two is out here. We, this parabola right here, let me scroll up a tiny bit. <clears throat> now, if you notice our original had a negative x squared. If I graphed this original function, I would have had a sad parabola. However, I like my parabolas to be happy or my x squared turned to be positive. So what I first did was I multiplied by negative one. That did have the effect of flipping the inequality. So I really wanna focus on this. I'm about to graph our function and I wanna know when are the y values positive. All right, our actual functions right here. So let's go ahead and graph that. We spent time on the intercepts. It's a happy parabola and that's enough information to get a decent graph. Another smart thing to do is just check the y-intercept. And we do that in a very similar way to the x-intercept. The only difference is we take zero and f it. So I'm gonna scroll back up. f of zero, you have zero x squared, zero x minus six. So f of zero equals negative six, and we have zero comma negative six is our y-intercept. Now, one thing you'll notice, this is not to scale. That's okay. We don't need a perfectly scaled graph here. So let's go ahead and answer this question finally. Where are the y values positive? So that's what we need to focus on right now. Where are the y values positive? So I'm gonna shade in that part of the graph and then we're gonna describe it. So here's our graph. Where are the y values positive? That's the upper half. We're not allowed to equal zero, so we have to skip over. It's not okay to equal zero. And we want all this positive part and all this positive part. All right, so let's go over the worst way to answer this question correctly. The y values are positive when the y values are positive. That didn't help out very much. Oh, so we have to describe when are the y values positive. So you can't just say when they're positive. We need to describe what x values correspond to the y uh, positive y values. You can think of this part I shaded in as casting a shadow and where it's going to cast the shadow is all on this to the left part of the real axis or the x-axis and on this right part of the x-axis. So I have to describe those two portions. So the left interval goes all the way to negative infinity and up to negative three. We do not equal negative three, so it's open there. And we're gonna start back from two, so I'm describing the right interval now, two to positive infinity. And this right here will be the answer to our question. So again, oh, that was too much. We're just describing the two parts of the graph that are above the x-axis, but we're describing it using x values. So I'm gonna make one modification to this problem. And <clears throat> this will be a slightly different problem, but if I slipped in less than or equal to here, it would put an equal sign here, an equal sign here, an equal sign over here. So now it's okay to equal zero. And down on our graph, what would happen is I'd fill in these two portions and the answer would change slightly Still going negative infinity to negative three, the difference is three is now okay. Positive two is also okay. So if you have a less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, you're going to include the uh, end values on your interval. You of course never include infinity and negative infinity.